Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to harden and temper a hammer. So I hope you'll find this information handy and that you'll stick around for the entire video and not miss one bit. So as you can see, I've got a fairly open fire pot. I've packed down the coal and my ideal is, is that I want to take and bring this hammer head up to a critical temperature which will be just slightly above a scaling heat, but not too far. So anytime that you harden and temper a tool, you wanna bring the temper, you wanna bring the hardening in the critical temperature range, you wanna bring it up to just where it becomes critical. You do not want to take and get it where it gets over critical, which is too high of a heat, and you don't want it to not reach critical temperature. So the easiest way to do this is to do a test. Bring it up to what would be over critical temperature. Then let the heat slowly sink back from critical temperature, from over critical to where just the magnet sticks again. And once that magnet sticks, then you know that at that color range, that will be critical temperature for you on that particular piece of steel. That is a quick way of finding that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting this thing heated up, and then I will show you what that looks like. And well, once it's fully up to critical temperature, we will quench it. Now things on the camera look a lot hotter than what they are. So, you know, bear with me. It'll look like it's over critical or like it's gone nuclear, but that's just kind of part of it. So I'm gonna bring this up to heat. Again, anytime you're working with tool steel, you wanna bring it up to heat and to that critical temperature very slowly. Very, very slowly. All right, well I'll be right back with you as soon as I get this up to temp. So I have this piece heated up. I wanted to take a few seconds uh, to talk before we go in for the quench and I show you what that looks like and explain a little bit about hardening in of itself. Now, you'll see a lot of preferences around online. Each tool steel, each steel that you use that is for tool making requires a different process. Not all of them do, but most of them do. So what I'm working with right now is a 1095 tool steel and that is a fairly high carbon steel. It's still considered much lower than something like an 01 or um, you know, a 5160 or a 4140 or things like that. So it's much smaller on the carbon scale as far as that's concerned, but it's kind of like pegged out on the carbon content end of a simple carbon steel. Now, that being said, all 10 series steels from 1030 all the way up to 1095 are water hardening tool steels. That means you will not obtain full hardness in oil. Now a lot of people quench in oil because it's safer. It's safer, there's less tendency to crack or split or chip or have stress fractures. But a lot of that comes down to improper forging technique. A lot of guys get to this final stage and they'll, you know, they'll quench it and it'll crack. And then what they did not do is they did not take the time to properly anneal the tool. They brought the tool up too hot too quickly. They did not give the tool a chance to rest, so to speak. Okay, so it's very important that you do the normalization or you do the annealing. You need to anneal. The higher the carbon the content it is, you need to spend longer heat soak times at that critical temperature to allow that to slowly get nice and happy and not be all stressed out. Uh, I'm using layman's terms here uh, because that's just the type of guy I am. If you want to get real technical about it, I suggest you find yourself a heat treating book or a manual on that. Now, oil quenching or salt quenching or brine or this or that that everybody else says and there's miracle properties and this and that, all that's bogus. It's all a bunch of malarkey. Each steel has its own specific way that you are supposed to treat the steel. 
if you do not know what type of steel it is that you are working with, then you are shooting in the dark. So if it hardens well in oil and it suits your need, then hey, it might be an oil hardening tool steel, but without knowing for sure, uh, you never really can tell. Now, guys have a lot of success hardening in oil. Knives, hammers, you name it, things like that. I suggest that you look it up. You can always Google it. Google's a wonderful place for that type of information to find out what type of steel you're working with and does it harden in oil or water or brine or what the specific temperatures are. Now you're never going to get exactly accurate in a coal forge or a gas forge. So unless you have an even heat or something like that, you're never going to get exactly accurate temperatures for these to be perfect anyhow. So I'm just pointing that out here. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to try to, you know, they're going to comment in the comment section, that's okay. Uh, of this video, it's not really open to debate or argument. Get yourself a good heat treating guide. Get yourself a slide rule, a heat treat slide rule to tell what type of materials you are working with. If it's that critical for you, make sure that you take and follow the rules of that tool steel that you're working with. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have a lot of effort into a piece. It was an oil hardening steel and you quench it in water and the whole thing break on you. Uh, in use. You get it too hard or you stress it out and you lose all that work. So without further ado, this piece is good and hot and it's like I said, it's over critical. I'm going to let it cool down until where it just becomes magnetic again and then I'm going to bring it up to that color temperature in the fire to go for the quench. So without further ado, let's quick. go to the quench. You want to work a figure eight when you do this? and try not to clang it on anything or hit it on anything. And you may be wondering, why do you shake it around in the bucket? The reason why you shake it around the bucket is to take and avoid cavitation on the surface of the material, okay? And that cavitation is them air bubbles that you see off the side of it there. They'll form on the surface and prevent any more water when it has that lid frost effect to stop anything from actually uh, from it fully hardening the tool. So you want to cool this all the way down. Make sure it's cool and that it no longer sizzles. If you start seeing a little bit of steam come off of it, just make sure it's all the way cool. And just put it right back down into the tank. So this is just uh, whatever the day is. It's ambient temperature water. Um, it was fairly cool last night. So the temperature of this water is a fairly cold water. If you're worried about breaking steels like this, you can always boil some water and then quench it in some boiling water or some hotter water. Um, things like that. I've heard heating the water can help. I don't generally worry about that. Um, you know, the hardening process is a very severe process for a tool anyhow. So let me get you out of here and then we'll take a look at how this hammer looks up close and personal. So here we are. This is an as hard steel now. I want you to take a look at the kind of the surface pattern here and if you see these really gray areas in here, things like that, what that is supposed to be is martensite formation. So I am, once again, I am not a metallurgist here, so take what I say with a grain of salt when it comes to this. Uh, this is the most commonly accepted thing that I have been told, and so that's what I'm telling you. Uh, it is martensite formation, and it is a good indication of hardness, that you have hardened now this piece of uh, steel. Obviously, you can always check it with a file. I'm not going to do that because I already know that this is hard for the simple fact of the way that it looks. It's very gray in color. It's got a good martinite, martensite formation on the surface here that you can see. And I also know that this is a lot heavy. I know 1045 hardened just like I did in the water is just as hard as glass. So 1095 is gonna be even more so. Uh, so I personally don't have to take and file check it. Plus I don't wanna damage my surface finish. 
Now speaking of that surface finish, this surface finish is just a sanded surface finish and it's been hand sanded. So I will have to hand sand all this nice and clean before we go to the tempering step. We want all surfaces of this hammer to be good and clean if we can when we go to the tempering step. Now, I don't always do this in my own shop. Again, I know what hard is and I have some other ways that I check it personally that I know that it's gonna hold up and I trust my hammers. If you're just getting started at this, Make sure you clean the entire piece up so you can watch the temperature colors run to know for certain that you've actually got it where it needs to go. So the next part is going to be the tempering stage. I'll come back to you after I've got this completely clean. And we are going to heat up a drift and we are going to put a drift in the eye here. And this is one of the easiest ways I've found to be able to temper uh, a hammer head because you want it to be soft around the eye of the hammer where it's the thinnest here and then you want to just draw it out to a about like a bronze color uh, no more than a bronze to a light straw out at the actual hammer faces that'll give it really good hardness and at the same point um, toughness that we need in a hammer something that's going to be hammering away again this only applies to this particular type steel. You have got to adjust your methods based upon the type of tool steel that you're using. So without further ado, I'll get this cleaned up and we will be over at the vise next with a heated up drift to take and draw these temper colors. Okay, everybody, here we are at the vise. Give me one second. I'll bring the drift over. So this is just a piece of mild steel that I forged to be able to drift and hold the hammer head. You want it to be really good and hot in order for it to work out perfectly. And then it's as simple as setting the hammer straight down on the drift, just like so. And now we wait. So now we're sitting here, we're going to try to wait for these temper colors to start showing up. And you'll start seeing them and noticing them uh, since the cheeks of the hammer eye, the thinnest portion, that will be the first place that you actually start seeing the temper colors actually roll through. Let me get you a little closer. Here we go. Take you up just a fuzz. Hopefully we'll be able to see that. So we're gonna wait for this to take and roll on. You just have to give it time, and this is a process of time right now. You can't rush this. If you rush it, you'll be sorry. You'll either go too far past your tempering colors, or you won't get it tempered enough. So take your time and heat it and let it soak up that heat. That hammerhead's really got to soak up that heat to get a good thorough temper. So I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to temper it from the opposite direction. Get down in there. Just try to make sure we keep that heat nice and even. Let that heat up and keep sucking that heat out of there. And depending on how heavy or thick the hammer is, uh, the size of the hammer, you may have to heat this repeatedly doing this method. Now, a quicker way of taking and doing this is by taking a torch, like a rosebud. Uh, the reason why I'm not doing that in this video is because not everybody has a rosebud. But you can take a rosebud torch and heat just in this area and just in this area and then let the tempered colors run to both sides of the hammer head. And that is a perfectly acceptable way of doing it as well. In fact, it's a lot quicker than what this is. But this is a great way if you're beginning at making hammer making that you can get a nice even and really throughout temper the way that you need it to be. Uh, the easiest way possible and it's consistent you can get consistent results with this so we're waiting on it 
And it looks like I'm going to end up having to reheat this drift a little bit to kind of hurry this along. So we'll go ahead and set this off to one side and I'll get this heated back up. And then we will be right back in this next clip. Okay, now we have this reheated. We'll go right back into the vise. Get it good and tightened up. It's not slopping around. And we'll slip that hammer right back down on there. So again, we'll let this heat. And hopefully we'll get to see those tempered colors run. Like I said, it may take a few times, depending on how cold the hammer was and things of that nature. Zoom you in here. Okay, so we'll just wait for this temper colors to start running. Any day now, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to warn you, this is about until you actually start seeing colors themselves actually start running. Until you actually see those colors start running on the surface of the material, it's about like watching paint dry. So there'll be a, about, oh, I don't know, 60 seconds of excitement after all this wait time. Uh, once you actually start seeing those colors start arriving on the surface and moving out towards the ends. The reason why this is so effective is because it does radiate out from the center. So you really do get a truly a good temper at the core of the hammer head and then graduated tempering out towards the faces, which is a really nice effect. So I'm starting to see like a really pale straw. I don't know if you guys can see that just yet, but it's just starting to kind of get a sheen of straw and color, which is a good sign. So what I will do is once the colors start moving, I will come right back to you. So this way you don't have to watch 45 minutes of paint drying. We'll come back as soon as these colors are on the move. Okie doke, I don't see, I don't, can't tell whether it's actually picking it up on the camera here uh, or not on the viewfinder, but it has now started to temper out here. Uh, we have gotten that nice golden color. It's kind of ran a little bit past, and now we're getting that nice golden bronze color out towards the edges of the hammer head. Uh, if it's not picking it up on the camera right now, I'll try to do a little finished photo. Um, yeah, my gloves starting to smoke off there. I'll try to do a little finished photo of this thing uh, so you can see the way those temper colors actually transpired. Sometimes, for your best efforts, you're trying to get this on camera and you can't. Uh, as the temper colors are based upon oxidization and the way that that acts with the lighting. So I will do my best to see if I can't get a finished photo of this as tempered and put it at the end of this video. So stick around for that. Anyways, this is how you can harden and temper a hammerhead. I just wanted to take and put that out there for anybody who was struggling with this. I hope you found it informative. If you did, remember to give me a like and uh, comment what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. Like always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.